So this is the time of year when many of you head out to do a little house hunting. School year is wrapping up and houses look better in the spring. They just do. But before you get out there, the Fox 5 I teams data foul has three rules of house hunting. Helping us out, Dana. Because I know it's a long time ago when I bought my first house many mm -hmm. years ago, did it by myself and I compared what I thought I could buy to how much I was paying in rent. That was wrong. How'd that go? <laughs> and there's more yeah. to it than that. Let me first say before we get into that, when you head out, please don't look at houses outside of your price range. Elise and I both say don't, don't do this. Do it. You'll like them. Don't do it. <laughs> I know it's going to make you unsatisfied with what you can afford. You'll want more and you got to stick to what fits your budget, but you naturally have to decide what that budget is before you home shop. So here we go. Here's the first financial rule to follow. Lenders don't want your monthly payment to be more than 28% of your combined income before taxes. Again, 28%. Rule number two, understand what a monthly payment really is. Again, it's not like rent. It's your principal, the interest, taxes, insurance. That's what your house payment really is. All those things. The principal is the only thing that really equates to rent. Rule number three, get out a mortgage calculator. And this is what you're going to need to know before you get started. How much you will put down. That's your down payment. What interest rate do you qualify for? What kind of property taxes will you pay in the area that you want to live? That's the part most people skip. Add in PMI. That's an additional fee if you're not putting down 20%. And once you reach that 20% of the payoff, then that's gone. Home insurance and finally HOA fees, if there are any, they can be a lot of money and they never go away and they always go up. Okay, I've already populated this mortgage calculator for you. We're going to work with a $200,000 house here, putting down 10% with a 4% interest rate. There's an average property tax number in there. We're doing PMI because you're not putting down 20% but 10. And we're adding in some insurance. Now remember, yours is going to be a little different from this. But anyway, the estimated mortgage payment on this $200,000 home would be just more than $1,200. When you're done with that PMI, it drops down to $1,100. This will give you a real solid understanding of what you can afford so that you're not disappointed when you finally sit down across from that lender who says, can't afford that. Yeah, this isn't something you want surprises with. No. It's just not. It's, no. This is not one of those things. Okay, interest rates still pretty good too. Yeah, right and that's good news mm -hmm. for some and not as much for others. It, you know, if you've got a good credit rating, you will get a better deal. And what I recommend, I didn't have this in here, but let's do this. Um, go on a calculator, look at good credit. Mm -hmm. Look at great credit put in a number for poor credit and you're going to see the difference in what you'll pay. Ah. Good credit actually pays. Yeah, so that matters then though when you're when right. you're working with the calculator. Yes. You got to have that in. Yes. Okay. And listen, don't shop outside <laughs> of your price don't point. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's it, like what you said. You're going to like the countertops better. I know. It hurts. The floors. You're like, oh. I know. I yeah. know. But it's not worth it to, to no. strain yourself financially. Don't strain yourself that. along. There you go. All right. We appreciate it, Dana. Uh -huh. Thank you.